What I'm going to do now is actually split the code. On the left hand side of the screen, I've got what's in the inspector. On the right hand side of the screen, I've got my nodes and I put everything in the M1 node. What I'll be doing now is putting a label right at the very top of the inspector to encapsulate the controls and we'll talk about labels. You need two parts to a label. You need a part in the node, so on the right, that's the node M1, and then you need a part inside the inspector, so that's the left, the inspector. I'm going to come to the node first, and in your node that you put, and it can be any node, you'll get used to your own conventions and where you put them, but I need to come to where it says view info operator info and come below it. I'm actually going to come below Below my comments that I've put in. If you've not put a label or anything in this inside the macro editor or when you build in your macro in the edit controls, we need to add user controls. So my shortcut is UC and it gives me the user controls. So I'm adding into the nodes some extra controls. User controls is exactly the same code as when you open the edit controls panel and you change a parameter or you change a control or you add a control, it's going to add the user control into your code. We then come in between these two brackets and just make some room and I'm going to add a node label. My shortcut for snippets is NL. I'll fill this in and I'll explain it later. We're going to call it label 01 and we're going to give it to start with 10 controls. We're not sure unless we count the controls in the inspector how many controls we have, but at this stage I just want to show you how to add a label. That's all we need inside the node of the code and now we're going to come up to the inspector section of the code we're going to have it at the top now remember main input isn't visible it's to bring the information from the timeline i'm going to press label and this has to be the same so it has to be 01 and then press tab and here it's going to be scam parameters and it's going to go in the control plate so let me explain these the label 01 has to match the label 01 in the node. It can be anything that starts with a letter. It doesn't have to be the word label 01, label 02, it can be anything. What we then need to do, we'll look in the node first. So the label 01, that's the name we've given the label. The integer means it can be a floating point. It's going to be a drop down button. So it's going to have that little arrow next to it. It's a number. It's going to encapsulate 10 codes. This tells me that it's passive, not going to render, and you don't need decorative things to render. It doesn't have any animation on. So passive is, is it going to render or not? External is, have we got any keyframes on it? It's a label control. That's the name of the input. So if it was a checkbox, that would say checkbox. Link name is what you see in the control, in the inspector section. This name section overwrites what's in the code. So you could leave it as label one, but I do tend to name these the same. And then when I come back to the code in a month's time, it's easy to figure out what it is. So that is um, as clear as mud. And we now look at the inspector. So what's in the code has to have an instance in the inspector to see it. So that's why it says label one instance input. It's just a copy. The source operator is the node that the code is in. So on the right hand side, then we're working in our node M1. And I've named it M1 because of the snippet. The label is the source operator. So here, label has to be the same as what is on the right hand side. It can be anything. And what I tend to do is have this label one instance, the source and the node the same. The name is what you see in the label in the inspector and it overrides what's inside the node. The page is where it is in the inspector, what page it's on. And you can put it on any page, you can create your pages. I'm gonna save that, select all and copy, jump into resolve, paste it. And now at the top, we can see we've got a label which encapsulates the top 10 controls. And the reason I've done the top 10 controls is because these are animation. So I'm gonna move these to their own page called animation. So that is labeling let's go back to here something that's really straightforward and really easy but occasionally it gets confusing is how to put something on a different page if we scroll down the code until we come to the animation so we've got the animation and you can see it says the name position so if i come under here and add page and make a page called animation that and everything below it is going to go on a different page. Now this is going to move some controls we don't want, but I just want to show you what happens by just putting this one line, saving it, selecting all, copying, going back into DaVinci Resolve, pasting it. And what you can see now is we've got our label covering the top 10 controls. We've then got 
here animation and new page if we select this we've got the position sources where it starts but when we come down here we've got the shadow controls in the here as well in the bottom left as i'm over and hovering over the shadow controls in the bottom left you can see that's input 46 go back to the code and we go to input 46 which is here this is um so that's the mass pivot in fact we can go back so input 39 is just under the animation because there's anim curve so here this is the mask so i'm going to put a comment in mask and then here what we can do is we can come underneath the default is the default setting that's in there again this is an instance that is also inside the node so if you don't change both it won't change but let's just come down here and go page and put that back on controls save it out select tool copy go to which resolve paste it in so now those controls have come back over here if we come here we've only got the animation controls because at the change of so this is input 38 so in between input 38 and input 39 we added another page which then brought the shadow input over here the offset input 39 back to this page if we then come down here we've got another animation that starts here which is input 57 so let's go back to the code and we we'll just come down to input 57 so that's the switch that's the end of the position so here i'm going to put that this is the um intro and outro animation below here you can see it already says page controls if i change that controls to animation it will move that and everything below it until the next page to animation so I'll scroll down so that's actually the end so we've got outputs next i'm going to save it select all copy it go to davinci resolve paste it in and now oh miss one so now i've got more animation in here but i've missed one so let's come here this is input 72 let's come back here so input 72 is says controls here so this is what's bringing them back to the controls page so if i click here and put animation i could actually just delete this there's one above it select all copy back over to davinci resolve paste it in and now we've got all the animation on its own page so i could label that up and make it neat and i can label this up and make it neat and here i've got my label now some people want a label but they want it to remain open so when i paste this in this is closed hiding those 10 controls one thing to notice is this line this line appears below the number of controls you put into the node so that is a line at 10 control if that line was down here there's another one here but if that line was down here then this would encompass all these controls but i'm just going to answer the question of how do you keep this open if we go back into the code and what we want to do is we've got the label so we want to be on the right hand side of the code in the node m1 we've got the label here in this node so what we need to do is we need to put a input a value into this node and the way we do it and it's really easy because you always have this perform depth merge input value we always have this in the node so i'm just going to come to the end of the line and i'm going to copy that and where this says depth merge i'm going to change it to label 01 so as you can see this is referring to this and then zero is closed and one is open so save that out so here these are your settings for what's inside so the performance step map settings is zero but you can add your labels on and this is how you hide labels as well in the future what we can do is label 01 that we're saying have the value as one have it open so let's select all copy go back to resolve and now when we paste that in this is already open because we give it a value of one not a value of zero and that holds that open now what i'm going to do now i'm going to go and uh, have my breakfast because i got up to record this really early i've had a coffee and i'm going to stop here and have breakfast and i'll come back to this later today so i'll see you shortly breakfast over and done with and i've been thinking over breakfast the inspector's quite busy so i want to tidy the inspector up first before i start hiding controls so i'm going to add some more labels into the inspector let's dive in in the scan parameters up here this line is at the 10 control mark in this section we've got how to change the shape and the color 
but here we've got moving the media so i'm going to have a label here that indicates that this is for moving the media inside so i'm going to jump back into the code and then i'm going to start in the node section and i just need to come underneath this label after this comma and um, we do nl i'll show you the snippet shortly this is going to be 02 and how many controls have we got well we've got one two three four controls and then i come over here and this is where the border finishes and then here I'm going to put a label 02 this is going to be media transform and it's already on the controls page so I'm going to save that uh, let's just tidy that up select all copy jump back into fusion paste it in and now we've got that media transform here now it is closed we know we can change the number of sides we can change the color of the border and the border width and then this transforms the media inside what I'll do is again I'll just show you how to have this open all the time if you want to do that so inside the node the m1 node we've got the label one here all we need to do is copy that down and change that to label two so it's saying label two's value is one we save it select it all and copy it bring it down here and paste it and now this is held open you'll also notice it's nested below here so it's not in line here and that's because this parameter has 10 controls under it if we wanted to move this media transform out a bit all we do come back into the code and where we've got this was 10 i've been playing so we've got 10 and 4 so what we do is take the 4 off there so that gives us 6 select all copy it come back in here and paste it and now they're in line so this line is at six controls and if we close that we can still see that rather than it being nested so you can nest the labels or you can have the label label nav labels you can let have the label as the parent so out here rather than nested and that's already open now sometimes it can be quite busy open we can have it closed and what i think i'll do is have this closed so i'm going to go back into the code and i'm just going to change that i'm going to leave the it in there and change it to zero and copy it jump back in here again paste it and now it's closed and that's because i'm going to do the next group at the mask offset but this is going to be a little different because if we look in the code next part of the code is animation which we move to the animation page so we'd need to come down to the input of that mask and the way to have a look we can hover over the mask bottom left we can see it's input 39 so back into the code and we come down to input 39 and there we go i've put a comment on it so i can put my next label here and i can do l tab and this is going to be 03 and this is going to be my mask whoops what am i doing mask transform and it's in the controls page we're not going to see this unless we put a label 03 in the node so we're going to come over here and we're going to do label 03 and how many controls have we got well we've got one two three four five six seven seven controls so we have seven controls and now if we select all of it copy it come back into here and paste it we've got the mask transform controls here as well and then the next one is shadow so if we hover over here it's 46 so let's go back into the code and there we go we've got 46 here's the shadow i'm going to put a comment in there and then this is going to be label 04 it's going to be shadow shadow parameters it's in the controls that's correct and we need a label 04 in here i'm going to count the controls one two three four five six seven eight eight controls so i'm going to come over here and this is going to be a node label 04 with eight controls uh, save and then I'm going to select all copy come in here paste it and we now got the shadow parameters with a label this is the global position so if i hover over here in the bottom left we'll say input 54 jump back into the code input 54 put um comment position parameters and then i'm going to put label 05 it's going to be called global position there are one two three controls so just come back here node label 05 three controls select all copy and paste and now we've got everything underneath 
with labels. So we've got the main one open, and then we've got these here, which we can open when we require them. I'm going to jump back into the code, and we did that very quickly. I'm just going to tidy up now. So label 05, it was global position. I'm going to copy that and change that to global position. And this is just so I can remember what these nodes are. So I'll copy this, label four, there's my parameters, then label three, there's my mask transform. Label two, there's my media transform. And as I said, these don't affect anything in the inspector. It's what's on the left in the inputs. So this name overwrites this name, but I include them in here. So when I come back to this code in three months time, then I can have a look and go, oh, right, yeah, that is the label for that transform. So I'm going to leave it here for today of how to put labels on. In the next video, we're going to look at um, putting a checkbox on to hide controls and hide controls with parameters. But I wanted to tidy up the inspector so you can see how to add labels and how to make them open by default or close by default. So until then, have a great week and I'll see you next Sunday.